Hello, welcome back to the channel. And uh, today I thought we would do a shorter style video. Obviously I say that every time and they keep getting longer, but hopefully try to keep this one below six minutes um, and do the five biggest losers of the college football season last year. Uh, by losers, I mean underperformers, teams we thought we'd do good, didn't uh, national brands that underperform, things like that. Um, number one, the U, uh, Miami, Florida. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke was supposed to be a Heisman contender in many people's eyes. He wildly underperformed, only throwing 1,800 yards and uh, 10 touchdowns with five picks, 13 sacks. The backup, Jake Garcia, has just entered the portal the other day. Um, he's, you know, gone. A lot of overturn here. Um, Miami's also having a problems with the recruiting trail. They're number two uh, commit in the country. The cornerback, his name escapes me, I think it's Damani McLean, I think. Um, he is... Uh, He's, you know, flirting with Colorado pretty hard right now on social media, so they might lose him as well. Um, but I still think that they're going to be a force um, going forward. Um, not right now. Uh, I know that you always being back with Texas and a few other teams is kind of the joke, but um, right now they would do anything to get back to even having hype around their program. Um, I, I believe that um, with Cristobal in place and a good NIL package going forward, they'll start competing more, but um, as of now, they're, they're in deep trouble. Uh, number two, in that particular order is five teams. Uh, Boomer Sooner. Um, they had a really good re receiving and receiving core. They had a really good roster this year. Eric Gray, the Tennessee transfer. Dylan Gabriel, he'll be back, so that'll be good. Uh, Marvin Mims, also another 1,000-yard receiver, uh, six touchdowns. Eric Gray, 1,000-yard rusher, 11 touchdowns. They just had no defense. And for a guy... Uh, and Venables, the coach, you know, be making his money as the uh, guy you'd always watch Clemson. Like, who's that defensive coordinator? The defense is so good always. Like, he's going to be a great head coach. You know, that was Brett Venables, and he is now the head coach over at Oklahoma. They went 6-6 uh, six and six, and 6-7 six and seven after losing the bowl game to Florida State, in which they were overmatched, but covered the spread. So I don't know if you could really count that as a loss, <laughs> um, but, you know, obviously it does. Um you know, they got boat raced by a lot of teams. You're looking at their schedule here. Um, you know, uh, beating Nebraska is nothing, whatever. Losing to Kansas State, TCU, and Texas, not as bad as you'd think. I mean, you can't lose your rival 49 nothing. But uh, the loss to West Virginia and the loss to Texas Tech really hurt them. Because um, obviously we didn't know how good TCU actually was. So them getting smoked by TCU at the time was a nightmare, but not nearly as bad as, I mean, not really as good as we you know, not as bad of a loss as we thought it was, is what I'm trying to say. Um, the next one up, a bit of a better end of the season, but uh, now that they have Matt Rule, um, we have the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Uh, Casey Thompson, good quarterback. Um, I think he'll be good next year. Um, I believe he's coming back, not 100% sure. Uh, Anthony Grant, pretty good running back. He's good, too. Um, their best defender did transfer to Michigan. Thank you for that, Cornhusker fans. Um, but other than that, they got a, a relatively good uh, group of skill positions, you know, with a few years um, of recruiting and Matt Rule uh, trying to turn around a bigger program than he has in the past. And if he was able to do it at Temple, you'd think he could do it in Nebraska, um, get some good talent in there and build a good base. Um, I think that'll be a good team to go forward. Looking forward is watching and seeing how Nebraska does in the week. One of the weaker divisions in power conferences, uh, the Big Ten West right now. Um, they might end up getting rid of divisions when the California teams come in. So if you can get some success in the next year or two before that happens, who knows? You know, Colorado, uh, North Nebraska could be back. Uh, they got to play Colorado, but that's just what's out of my mind. But um, you know, Colorado's getting good too. So you'd hate to see Colorado get good, not Nebraska. Get a, that old Big Twelve. Uh, rivalry back you know none of them are in anymore um the next one is a local one i don't know if this is as important than other people but you know my dad went to central michigan uh and they had a really bad season uh they finished what was that four and eight um they hung around with penn state for a while almost covered the spread but bringing back dan richardson a legit quarterback 15 touchdowns five interceptions uh 2000 yards passing um he was supposed to be really good um and then returning the best rusher in the country uh, Lou Nichols, who I was shocked didn't transfer portal to Michigan State or another program, um, only with 600 yards this year and six touchdowns. Um, he was a little banged up, but he had almost doubled that last year and doubled the touchdowns. Um, they all were, you know, looked overmatched at times, losing Pimpleton, uh, the wide receiver, and Hard Knocks, Dream Star, and uh, standout from action was tough, um, clearly, as they did not do nearly as well as they were going to. Uh, be projected. 4-8 uh, in the MAC with that level of talent and that coaching staff is not it. 
Um, up next, the last one, Texas A&M. Uh, I know they finished strong beating LSU, but this team was supposed to be contending for the SEC West, and they finished sixth in it. Uh, Haynes King, Connor Wegman, Max Johnson, that carousel, uh, they're trying to figure that out. I know they got a few recruits um, bringing in one of the most uh, storied or highest rated recruiting classes of all time and seeing half of them, I believe half, enter the transfer portal. Um, their best player um, was clearly a Devin A. Chain, 1,000 yards rushing, 1,100 actually, eight touchdowns. He's going to go to the draft. So, you know, uh, hiring Bobby Petrino as an offensive coordinator, um, great on the field, uh, not so much the latter. Um, but uh, or the, off the field, um, but you know they're here to win football games. Uh, Jimbo Fisher is probably on the hot seat. It wasn't for uh, the honorable mention. You know he'd be known as the worst contract in football. Um, and the honorable mention kind of spoiled it. Seven uh, L Mel is the new nickname. Uh, Mel Tucker. I do like Mel Tucker as a coach. Great guy. Um, I like what he's building. Um, initially obviously it's a bad year this year but you know Michigan State wasn't good last year either and they had just had a record of a fraud team because of how much of a generational talent Kenneth Walker was you bring in Jalen Berger he had significantly worse stats and the record reflected that you know they won they were kind of like the Vikings last year won a lot of really close games out of nowhere kind of just walked their way into those wins and you know they came back to the earth this year I think the Vikings might do the same but this isn't an NFL video but uh Peyton Thorne not nearly as good as we thought he was Noah Kim who knows who they're Get a quarterback to be next year. Is it Hauser? Who knows? Um, but we'll see you with Michigan State in the future. I just want to do a quicker paced video and uh, get this out. So uh, those are your top five, uh, plus an honorable mention, worst teams uh, underperforming of the year.